بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الخلق أجمعين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين وبعد All praise is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Blessings and salutations upon the master peace Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless him and all his wives To bless his entire family To bless all his companions To bless those who have struggled and strived to bring the deen to us To bless every single one of us To bless our offspring Those to come up to the end of time May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep them on the deen Beloved brothers and sisters, yesterday we spoke about one of the great prophets and kings at the same time, the Prophet Dawood alayhi salatu was salam, David, may peace be upon him. And we also mentioned that when he passed away, his janazah or his funeral was attended by thousands, tens of thousands, because he was most loved due to the fact that he was a just man. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us such goodness and reputation that when we pass away, there will be people who will make an effort to attend the janazah. We don't want to be such that when we pass away, people say this man was a bad man, good riddance. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. Sometimes we live our lives in such a way that when we die, people become happy that this man is dead because he was a problem. So we need to live our lives in such a way that when we die, people realize that they have suffered a loss. And they mention the good that we've engaged in. If there's no good we engage in, then what would we like to remain after we have gone? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us a lesson. Allah says, وَوَرِثَ سُلَيْمَانُ دَاوُدَ وَقَالَ يَا أَيُّهَا النَّاسُ عُلِّمْنَا مَنْطِقَ الطَّيْرِ وَأُوْتِيْنَا مِنْ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ إِنَّ هَذَا لَهُوَ الْفَضْلُ الْمُبِينَ سُلَيْمَانُ عَلَيْهِ السَّلَامُ inherited Dawood what is the meaning of inheriting here? He got the prophethood as well as the fact that he became king. When it comes to something monetary and material, the messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala do not inherit and they do not leave something to be inherited, but everything goes out as charity. This is a hadith of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He says, Inna ma'ashir al anbiya ila nurah. He says, we, the prophets, no one inherits wealth from us. Ma taraknahu sadaqah. Whatever we have left is a charity. It is to, to be given out to charity. And the same applies to the knowledge of the prophets. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us through the blessed lips of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that the anbiya have left nothing besides knowledge. Whoever takes from it, the maximum will have benefited the most. So it is up for grabs. It's our duty to make sure we benefit the most from taking as much as we can from the knowledge that is left by all the prophets. So Sulaiman alayhi salam inherited Dawood alayhi salam and he told his people, Allah has blessed me with the speech of the birds and he has granted me absolutely everything. So much Allah has granted Sulaiman alayhi salatu was salam. Let's start moving and seeing what Allah gave Sulaiman. He gave him knowledge. He gave him wisdom. He gave him prophethood. He gave him the ability to judge between people in the most correct manner. He was a very, very sound judge between people. And Allah gave him kingdom over and above that. And lots and lots of wealth. He could communicate not only with the birds and with the animals and with various other creatures of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But Allah gave him the power to control the wind. Sulaiman alayhi salatu was salam. He was the king, Solomon. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant him mercy. Sulaiman. And he was a prophet at the same time. Over and above that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him the power to control the jinn kind, all of them, under his authority. He was able to jail them, to imprison them, to punish them, to use them in whatever way he wished. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, at the same time, our worshiper, ni'mal abdu innahu awwab. He was a very, very excellent worshiper of ours. But look at what he had. With us, once we start getting things, 
Sometimes shaitan comes to us and diverts us from the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These people, the more they got, the closer they became to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is why Allah speaks about how much He granted him even more, more than that. And it is not like Allah did not test them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tested these people. Allah says, وَلَقَدْ فَتَنَّا سُلَيْمَانَ وَأَلْقَيْنَا عَلَىٰ كُرْسِيِّهِ جَسَدًا ثُمَّ أَنَابٍ We tested Sulaiman alayhi salam to the degree that we had his body placed on this throne as though it was completely dead until he sought forgiveness and turned back to us. Now this is the tafsir I've given you of Al-Fakhr Al-Razi. He's also a Mufassir. And this is the tafsir I've given you. There are some narrations which are, and I'm saying the word again, Jewish Hebrew narrations that have seeped into our books. And the narration which states that Sulaiman alayhi salam passed through 700 of his wives in that evening, hoping that he would impregnate them so that each one of them could give birth to a child who would fight in the cause of Allah. That is a fabricated narration. It is a wrong narration. It is blasphemous to, for us to quote it. And it is even more blasphemous for us to believe it. So let us understand, whenever we have an Israeli riwayah, which means a narration that came to us from the Hebrew scriptures, if it has in it any disrespect for the Nabi, throw it straight out of the window. If it has any blasphemy in it, we throw it straight out because the Anbiya and the Prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala were higher than that. So we need to know that we should never fall prey to wanting to know more and more details, details beyond what Allah and His Messenger have mentioned. Because in that case, we could be without knowing, blaspheming the messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by believing things that were not a reality. And I'm sure there are a lot of people who might also have learned and they are scholars of deen who might be mentioning some of these narrations without realizing that it is wrong to trust those narrations that have seeped through our books which blaspheme our own messengers and the kings and those whom Allah has called excellent worshippers. So we don't agree with that. What Al-Fakhr Al-Razi says is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tested Sulaiman. He gave him everything that we just mentioned now. And on top of that, he made him sick and ill. So when Sulaiman married the Maradan Shadidan, he was sick, a very severe sickness, very severe illness. Mankind and the doctors could not help him. Jinn kind and all of them could not help him. The birds and in his entire army of birds could not help him. It is reported that they flew across finding herbs from various corners of the globe and brought for him, couldn't help him until he couldn't move and he was as a dead person on his own throne. And his kingdom was now almost as though it was taken from him because he was more or less totally immobile. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Thumma anab. Then he turned to us and he sought forgiveness. And فَاسْتَغْفَرَ rabbah. He continued seeking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's forgiveness. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of how we forgave him. وَلَقَدْ فَتَنَّا سُلَيْمَانَ وَأَلْقَيْنَا عَلَىٰ كُرْسِيهِ جَسَدًا ثُمَّ أَنَابٍ قَالَ رَبِّ اغْفِرْ لِي وَهَبْ لِي مُلْكًا لَا يَنْبَغِي لِأَحَدٍ مِّن بَعْدِي إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ الْوَهَّابِ He made a dua, Oh Allah forgive me. Look at how he started it. Oh Allah, forgive me, my beloved brothers and sisters. When we start a dua, we first declare the praise of Allah and express our dependence on Him. Then we send salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Then the first thing we do is seek forgiveness. Then when our slate is clean, now we ask what we want. This is the method of making dua. So we ask Allah to grant us a lesson from Sulaiman alayhi salam. He says, Oh Allah, forgive me. And now I'm asking you, Ya Allah, to grant me kingdom that you have never granted anyone. You will not grant anyone after me. And no one before him had been granted what he got, Sulaiman alayhi salam. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loved the way he called out. And Allah loved the fact that when he was sick and ill, he continued engaging in repentance. It did not make him lose hope. 
in the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Today when we become sick and ill, what happens? Make dua. After you make dua, you seek for one month, two months, three months, then you lose hope. You say, Ya Allah, what's the problem? I'm making dua, you are not curing me. A'udhu Billah. We ask Allah's protection. We lose hope very quickly. So if you do not lose hope, then there is mercy upon mercy, gift upon gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What is the worst case scenario? The worst case scenario is we pass away and we go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even a more beautiful place, the place we came from. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us a good death. So when Sulaiman alayhi salam made this dua, he says, Oh Allah, forgive me and grant me mulk. Mulk includes the kingdom and the authority more than anyone that you will ever grant after me. No one should have this after me, Ya Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala responded. Listen what Allah says. فَسَخَّرْنَا لَهُ الرِّيحَ تَجْرِي بِأَمْرِهِ رُخَاءً حَيْثُ أَصَابَ We immediately gave him the control of the wind. It blew according to his command and instruction. Wherever he wanted it to go, it went. Amazing! Amazing! And Allah says, وَالشَّيَاطِينَ كُلَّ بَنَّائٍ وَغَوَّاصٍ وَآخَرِينَ مُقَرَّنِينَ فِي الْأَصْفَادِ Allah says, we gave him control over all the jinn kind, those that could build so quickly, magnificent buildings, and those that could dive into the oceans and extract from it anything he wanted and he asked for. Sulaiman alayhi salam. And he had also the authority to tie up these jinn in such a way that they would be slave for him doing whatever he wants, all tied up in a line in a uniform fashion. So he had them in his army. And he had the wind in his army. And he was a king at the same time and a warrior. He was a mujahid. He was a warrior. He had one of the biggest armies in history, in, in living memory, subhanallah. In history, in fact. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us a lesson. What a powerful man. So humble. So just. And we are going to see the justice of Sulaiman alayhi salam this evening. We will see how he addressed even the smallest members of his army with utmost respect. Subhanallah. We today, we think we can speak to those who work for us in the house as though they are a piece of dirt. Allah protect us. When Sulaiman was granted the fadl and the virtue of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, on top of that, it made him realize how insignificant he is. When he was sick and ill and nobody could do anything, he realized, Ya Allah, bi'adhamati had al-mulk. With the greatness of all this that I have, still nobody can cure me besides you. I am totally dependent upon you, Ya Allah. Imagine, today when we have wealth, we have this, we rely on flying overseas and doing this and I'll get the top treatment and this and that. Not knowing, sometimes we forget that without the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it is Allah who guides the surgeon's hand. And it is Allah who guides the doctor to give you the correct medication. Sometimes medication of the doctors has been detrimental. We ask Allah to guide us and guide not only the doctors, but every single one of us in whatever field we are in. So Sulaiman alayhi salatu wasalam makes this dua. And Allah says, we gave him the reeh, the wind. We gave him the jinn kind. And Allah says, all kinds. Then Allah says, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Hada ata'una famnun aw amsik bi ghayri hisab. Oh Sulaiman, this is what we've given you. Do as you wish with whatever we've given you. Nobody can take back what Allah has given. If Allah decides to give you something, it's yours. If Allah decides to take it away, it is gone. Never ever can anyone give us something that Allah doesn't want to give us. The Prophet says, you should know that if the entire nation gets together in order to let some form of benefit reach you, it will never reach you unless Allah wants it to get to you. And if the entire population gets together in order to let some harm reach you, it will never reach you unless Allah intends it to reach you. Allahu Akbar, we ask Allah to grant us strength. So Sulaiman alayhi salatu was salam, after this, he used to control the wind. What a powerful verse of Allah. 
Allah says, for Sulaiman, we granted him the power of using the wind that covered a journey of one month in one morning. And Allah says, in the afternoon, it covered the journey of another month. So in one day, you would cover the journey of two months. That's what Allah says. What would happen? He had Bisat. He had a laid sort of a wooden plank. One wonders exactly how it was. We only know the word that is used here to describe it. Say more or less a mattress or a platform. His army or members of his army were instructed to sit on it. And he told the wind, take it. It would take that. It would take them a journey of two months in one day. Drop them off and come back. Allahu Akbar. And what would happen? The wind would blow it. Imagine he instructed the wind. Allahu Akbar. Look at the power of Sulaiman alayhi salatu wasalam. On top of that, he was a very humble man, extremely humble. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us. وَحُشِرَ لِسُلَيْمَانَ جُنُودُهُ مِنَ الْجِنِّ وَالْإِنسِ وَالطَّيْرِ فَهُمْ يُوزَعُونَ We had gathered for Sulaiman alayhi salam on a certain occasion his army from mankind, from jinn kind and from the birds. And they were all together moving in a certain direction. They were in such an order. Yuza'un means they were in a proper order. The order of a military commander. Which means, you know, when the soldiers are marching, they have a specific beautiful order. So we had the, the human beings, the jinn kind, the birds, the other creatures of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. On this occasion, the three are mentioned. And Allah says, Hatta idha atau ala wadin naml. قالت نملة يا أيها النمل دخلوا مساكنكم لا يحطمنكم سليمان وجنوده وهم لا يشعرون. When they passed the valley of the ants, Sulaiman with his huge army, my so big, a massive army, as he is passing the valley of the ants he notices one ant one calling out to the rest of the ants O nation of ants go into your dwellings because Sulaiman is coming with his army he'll probably trample over you without even knowing what has happened and Sulaiman heard this he was granted the ability to hear the ants you know it amazes me I have sat and watched ants very very carefully they are so cooperative. When you have left a crumb on the floor, what will happen? One ant will notice it and go back to call the rest. He will share. Not like us. You find something, you quickly hide it from everyone else. I hope they did not see it. No, that is insane. But the ants, they care for one another. They have an ummah. They have really a feeling. And that ant will go and call the rest. They will all come on the end too. What does that mean? They use one highway. All of them use the same road to get to that item. They, they won't break the road. Have you seen it? I'm sure you have. They all, you're wondering where are they going? They're all going in one way. And there's two-way traffic. So you find those going, those coming back. Those that are coming back, look at them carefully. They hit the head of the one coming. For me, I don't know the language. They're probably saying, is it still there? They're saying, yes, it's there. <laughs> we don't know the language. But Sulaiman salam knew the language. So he understood, he understood it beautifully and he called out to this Namla. Now he's speaking to an ant. Look at this. Allahu Akbar. He stopped his whole army, his entire army. He stopped it and he smiled at the statement of the ant. What did he say? قَالَ رَبِّ أَوْزِعْنِي أَنْ أَشْكُرَ نِعْمَتَكَ الَّتِي أَنْعَمْتَ عَلَيَّ وَعَلَى وَالِدَيْ O oh Allah, grant me the ability and the acceptance, the ability to be able to render the correct gratitude, enough thanks to you, Ya Allah, for what you have given me and my father. He's not saying, I thank you, Ya Allah. Uh, grant me the ability to thank you 
which means it's not lip service. When we want to thank Allah, we say Alhamdulillah. You ask someone, how's your business? He says, shukr, mashallah, shukr. What is shukr? Shukr means I thank you. But if you are sinning and you are not reading your salah, what shukr is that? Is that gratitude? Here is Sulaiman fulfilling the instruction of Allah. He's saying, Ya Allah, show me how I can thank you, Ya Allah. Look at the difference with us and with him. Yet we've got nothing compared to his kingdom. Wallahi, if we had to speak to the wind, as I said yesterday, they would take us to the mad hospital. It's true. Please don't try it out there. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, he made this dua, Ya Allah, grant me the ability to thank you, to be thankful to you, Ya Allah, for what you have bestowed upon me and my father, my parents. And on top of that, Ya Allah, وَأَنْ أَعْمَلَ صَالِحًا تَرْضَاهُ Ya Allah, keep me from those who only do pure deeds that will please you at all times. Protect me from bad and evil. Let me be from your humble worshippers and slaves. And here he is speaking to the ants. And he's hearing the statement of the ants. وَأَدْخِلْنِي بِرَحْمَتِكَ فِي عِبَادِكَ الصَّالِحِينَ And through your mercy, grant me entry into the circle of worshippers who are pious. Look at the power of the dua. We can also, we are allowed to use the same words in our dua. We are allowed to ask Allah using the exact words of Sulaiman alayhi salam. Nothing wrong with that. We should, in fact, use those words. Ya Allah, grant us the ability to be thankful to you for what you have given us and our parents. And Ya Allah, make us from those who are pious, who do good deeds and grant us entry into the circle of people who are the pious and the chosen that you have selected. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant that to us. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Thereafter, there was an occasion where he was inspecting his army. Imagine this man, powerful king, powerful, solid king, Sulaiman alayhi salam. He's inspecting his army. Allah gave him a lot of power. The jinn were frightened of him. Mankind frightened all the creatures, but they loved him at the same time because he was a just man. He did not oppress anyone. وَتَفَقَّدَ الطَّيْرَ فَقَالَ مَا لِيَ لَا أَرَى الْهُدْهُدَ أَمْ كَانَ مِنَ الْغَائِبِينَ As he inspected his army, he noticed that the hoopoe bird was missing. One bird, one little bird was missing. Imagine how, what type of an eye he must have had. Sulaiman alayhi salam. That he's noticing from a huge army, one little bird missing. Subhanallah. And he says, what is happening here? I don't see the hoopoe bird. Is he absent? What is it? Questioning. Now look at his statement. Sulaiman alayhi salam was a man of few words, but powerful words. Few words, but very powerful. He says, This hoopoe bird shall be punished severely or we might even execute it unless it comes with a clear, acceptable excuse. Why is it absent? We need to know. Look at what he is saying. He didn't just get upset and said, right, we're executing it. No, he says, we will execute it or we will punish it. But if it has come with an acceptable excuse, we will accept the excuse. So the hoopoe bird appears and he asks, what happened? The hoopoe bird at a bit of a distance speaks to Sulaiman alayhi salam and says, I have come to you with knowledge that you do not have. Now look at the power of the word. For Sulaiman alayhi salam, he had so much knowledge. He was powerful. He had armies that could check upon his enemy before they even knew that he existed. Allahu Akbar. What that means is he would send the jinn kind or the other creatures of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to go and have a peep at what was happening and come back with information before those people even knew that this man had an army and so on. So when someone is now telling him, a little bird is saying, I know something you don't know. He was really inquisitive. He wanted to know what is it you know that I don't know. Talk to me. Let's see. He says, I have come to you from Sabah. I'm coming from Yemen, Sheba, known in Arabic as Sabah. 
and I have brought you with I have brought you some solid information very authentic reliable news what is the news he says I have seen a woman who has a kingdom there. She rules over her people. She's been granted a lot by Allah. She's got lots of wealth and authority. Yes, Sulaiman has wealth and authority of another level, but he is now making mention of a woman who has authority and wealth. And on top of that, she has a very, very great throne. Her throne is so beautiful, meaning her palace where she would sit on her throne is something amazing. Then he says something else. He says, but I saw them worshipping the sun besides Allah. They were worshipping the sun out there. When it comes out in the morning, they worshipped it. As until it set, they continued worshipping the sun in different ways and different forms. It was, some narrations make mention of how there were different windows in the palace. 365 windows or windows enough for a day of every year and so on. All these are narrations that have come to us again from those Israeli riwayat. Whether they are true or not, only Allah knows. The crux is she worshipped the sun. And she did not worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And what this hoopoo bird is saying, again, blaming shaitan. Shaitan is the one who beautified for them this, so they are not guided. Which means shaitan can take away our guidance. When we are sitting, we need to ask ourselves, even as Muslimin, shaitan comes to us to take our iman away. He comes to us to take our aqidah and our belief away. He comes to us to take our salah away so we go out and engage in backbiting and we've given as a gift the salah to the person whom we have backbitten about so we lost the salah so we need to be careful of shaitan and we need to constantly thank allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for what he's bestowed upon us like i always say the rust we've developed within our spirituality needs to be shining it needs to be shined it needs to be removed and we need to have pure shining spirituality may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness and may he Grant us guidance at all times, protecting protection from shaitan. So after that, he says, they do not worship Allah. They have refused. Shaitan has misguided them from prostrating for the sake of Allah, who is not only the owner of the skies and the earth and whatever is in, but the one who removes whatever goodness is in the skies and the earth and he makes it apparent to us who takes the light out of the skies and the earth for us and he grants us so much goodness the owner of absolutely everything look at what shaitan has done he has made them deny allah and worship the sun and at this juncture when we read the arabic verse we all fall prostrate for the sake of to, to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and for allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because when we hear how the queen of sheba and her people did not prostrate for Allah because shaitan led them astray. We are automatically saying, Ya Allah, we will fall prostrate to you, Ya Allah. So this is why we have something known as Sajdat Tilawa. I've explained it in the past and here I've just repeated it in brief. Now, Sulaiman alayhi salatu wasalam, he wanted to call her to Allah. But he realized that the description of this woman, she has kingdom, she has lots of wealth, she has power, she has people, she has her army, she has authority, she has so much. So we Allah has blessed me with much more. Let me use what Allah has given me to show her that if you worship Allah, you will even have more than what you have right now. So he did not give her da'wah directly besides in the first letter. And in that first letter, he wrote a letter in a very beautiful manner because he did not know who was on the other side precisely. He only had the information. Now, very importantly, when the bird came in, look at how a bird is so small, so small. And the army is huge. In our armies, if there was a bird, people wouldn't even notice if it went. Here, people are slaying human beings left, right and center across, across the globe and they are not even bothered. There, look at Suleiman's respect for one bird. Small little component of his army. And he says, okay, I've heard what you said. I need to make sure that what you've said is true. I need to find out whether you're just fooling me or whether you're telling the truth. 
So what did he say? He says, Subhanallah, Sulaiman alayhi salatu wasalam is now speaking to the bird. He says, I will see whether what you have come with in terms of information is true or false. Take this letter that I am writing and go and give this letter to her and see what happens. What was in the letter? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of it in Surah An-Naml. The surah is named after the one little ant because I know we have not paused so long when it comes to the story of the ant, but I have made mention of how important it is for us to cooperate with one another, to defend one another. This is the only way we will be protected. Whenever there is harm coming from one direction, we need to realize that we are part of one major family. As I said moments ago, we are part of one big family. We need to have a genuine feeling for one another, feeling in humanity, feeling in religion. So if you don't share the religion with the person, at least you are a member who shares humanity with them. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make our hearts humanitarian and to make us from those who are keen on teaching people goodness. When you see a person astray, instead of thinking of how to plot against them, think of how they could see the light and come to the right path. This is the lesson we learn from the ants. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says here, قال سننظر أصدقت أم كنت من الكاذبين. سليمان عليه السلام says we will see whether you are telling the truth or you are a liar. اذهب بكتابي هذا فألقه إليهم ثم تولى عنهم فانظر ماذا يرجعون. Go with this letter of mine to this queen and place it there and move back slightly and see. What they do as a result of that particular letter? What happened? قالت يا أيها الملأ إني ألقي إلي كتاب كريم. The letter got there, and this woman sees the letter. She called all her people. She called all her chiefs. She says, "Oh my people, I have received a letter, an honored letter. It has two lines in it." إنه من سليمان وإنه بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ألا تعلو علي وأتوني مسلمين. That is Sulaiman. He says this is from Sulaiman in the name of Allah most gracious most merciful. Do not be haughty over us and come to us surrendering. That is it. We want you to surrender to us. And he started in the name of Allah, meaning in the name of my maker. Now, there is a, a little technicality there. Some might ask, why didn't he say, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, this is from Sulaiman. Why did he say, this is from Sulaiman, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. It is reported, and this is obviously the ijtihad of some of the scholars. They say that, had he written Allah's name first, if she had got angry and upset, she might have cursed Allah. So he wrote his name first. Had she got angry and upset, she would rather curse Sulaiman than to curse Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is also wisdom when you are writing. He wrote his name, Innahu min Sulaiman, and this is Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. And he says, very short statement, Allah ta'alu alayya wa atuni muslimin. Do not be haughty over us and come surrendering to us. Now she's asking her people, what should we do? Why? She is worried. She has kingdom. She has power. She has authority. She has wealth. She has everything. But for someone to warn her and to threaten her and to tell her something, there must be some power she did not know existed. She didn't know anything. So what happened? She looks at all her people. قالت يا أيها الملأ أفتوني في أمري. She decides to consult. She says, Oh my people, give me some decision regarding this matter. ما كنت قاطعة أمرا حتى تشهدون. I don't want to make a final decision without you people being involved and without your witness and so on. So tell me. So they looked at her. They said. قالوا نحن أولو قوة وأولو بأس شديد والأمر إليك فانظري ماذا تأمرين. They looked at her and they said, Look, we are people with lots of power. We have a strong army. So now you decide what you want us to do. Which means if you want us to fight, we will go. We have a powerful army. But she was very clever. She did not know 
the size of the army of Sulaiman. Because she now knows that if we are going to fight an army and they are stronger than us, look what she says. قالت إن الملوك إذا دخلوا قرية أفسدوها وجعلوا أعزة أهلها أذلة وكذلك يفعلون. She stopped and she says, you know, when the kings and the big and the haughty walk into a city with an army, they turn it upside down, and those who were the leaders are the most disgraced from amongst them thereafter. I want to avoid that scenario. Today on the globe, take a look at what happens. When huge armies walk in, those who are the leaders are the ones who are actually the most disgraced. So this woman understood it many, many years back. That do not confront this army. Let us try and make peace with the army. Let us see who these people are. So he says, she says, وَإِنِّي مُرْسِلَةٌ إِلَيْهِمْ بِهَدِيَّةٌ فَنَاظِرَةٌ بِمَا يَرْجِعُ الْمُرْسَلُونَ I'm going to send him a gift. One of... A, a very very valuable gift I will send him with a few messengers from amongst you and you can go and when you go there you should just have a peep you know so they are spies actually you have a peep and see the size of his army and bring back information for us see how he reacted and what happens so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says these two people obviously they were messengers they left with the gift we will get to what Sulaiman alayhi salam says as these people left with a gift news got to Sulaiman from who? From the hoopoo bird and from all his other members of the army that these people are sending you a gift and this is what is happening. So he says, right, let's display the army, the entire army. So in the army now, there were lions, there were tigers, animals, birds, jinn kind, mankind, the wind, everything there, all. And these people are walking towards where Sulaiman alayhi salam is. And they're looking. And on top of that, his kingdom was displayed for them. So the gift they had, they saw lots of things similar to that and even better strewn around. So to them, this is valueless. Yet for them, that side there, it held a lot of value. They shook their heads, no ways. We want to face all these with our little army that we have there. They went to Sulaiman alayhi salam. It is reported they were actually feeling guilty to give this little gift. Because of how minute it became suddenly when they saw the throne of Sulaiman and they saw his army, they looked around him, they were shocked, they were amazed. Subhanallah. And as they tried to put forward this gift, Sulaiman alayhi salatu was salam responds. فَلَمَّا جَاءَ سُلَيْمَانَ قَالَ أَتُمِدُّونَنِ بِمَالِ when they got to Sulaiman, he said, what? You want to bribe me with some wealth here? You want to give me some wealth? You want to give me money? You want to give me some merchandise? Something you think is valuable? What Allah has given me is far better than anything you have. بَلْ أَنْتُمْ بِهَدِيَّتِكُمْ تَفْرَحُونَ Indeed, you people are excited. You're getting happy regarding your gift. You don't know. I know the whole plan. I know the whole plot. I know absolutely everything. And you see our army. We have absolutely everything been given by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Go back to them. Go back. We are going to come to them with an army that they will never ever be able to overcome. Impossible. And we will remove them from Sheba. We will remove them from it in a disgraced manner whilst they will be belittled. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. So what happened? These people started going back. They got back to try and convince this woman to say there is a problem. What is the problem? This man has such a big army. There is no ways we will be able to overcome his army. Impossible. They began to describe it to her in such a way that they made her frightened. And she was convinced that something needs to happen. They told her, you need to go yourself to him and try and make peace. So we do not want to surrender to him, but we don't want to fight him either. And he left us with only one option. You either fight or you come. Surrendering. 
So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made mention of what happened thereafter. Sulaiman alayhi salam had a meeting with all his army, with the main chiefs. As they were planning to leave and they were planning now to come towards Sulaiman alayhi salatu was salam. Sulaiman tells his people, oh my people, which one of you can bring her whole throne seeing that that was the biggest possession of hers. We said moments ago, one of the main possessions she had, beautiful throne of hers with that little palace that she had where she used to sit on the throne. Sulaiman says, which one of you can bring that throne to me here before they arrive here in submission? They are coming. Before they come here, bring the whole throne. Lift it up and bring it here. Amazing. Ifrit, who was one of the most powerful jinn, he says, I will bring it to you before you get up from where you are seated. Sulaiman used to sit from the morning to the afternoon. So which means in one morning, I'll have it right in front of you, everything. And you know what? I am so trustworthy that all the different diamonds and the different jewelry and all the beautification and adornment, I will bring it in such a way that it will remain intact. Just lift it all off, fly it down here and drop it down. Meaning bring it exactly where you want it. Sulaiman alayhi salam, as he's still pondering, another one speaks. The one who had knowledge of the book, the one who had knowledge of the book of revelation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are not so sure exactly who that was, but it is someone who had knowledge granted from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What does he say? He says, Ya Sulaiman, I will bring exactly what this one wanted to bring before you get up, but I will bring it to you before your eye returns as it blinks next. And as he blinked, Allahu Akbar, it was in front of him. Now she had left, she had left the place and her entire palace, if you'd like to say, was lifted as it was and brought there in front of Sulaiman alayhi salatu was salam. When he saw it in front of him, what did he say? What, what would we say? Look at what Sulaiman alayhi salatu was salam says. This is from the virtue of my Rabb. He has granted me this amount of power that we've brought something semi impossible right in front within the blink of an eye. Allah is testing me to see whether I am from amongst those who show gratitude and gratefulness or I am from amongst those who are ungrateful. And he continues to say, Whoever is thankful, it's good, it will benefit him. And whoever is ungrateful, they are not going to harm Allah. Allah is independent and most and full of honor, which means Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't need us to be grateful. We need to be grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When we are grateful, it will benefit us, not Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This evening we heard in the dua that was rendered by the Shaykh. What did we hear? He says, Subhana man takarram. We praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who is so full of honor that he did not forget any one of us. He's given us all. Imagine the, the gratitude that we owe Allah. He's given every one of us, whatever he's granted us. Has Allah forgotten anyone here? Subhanallah. Amazing. So this is the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now Sulaiman alayhi salam wanted to do something else. Sulaiman says, change slightly, modify and renovate her palace. So that, meaning her throne and its surroundings, so that we want to see whether she notices that it is hers or she doesn't even know. So her throne came in and it was modified, which means it was renovated. So it was made more posh. One narration, again, a Jewish narration makes mention that 
whatever she had had in mind that I'm going to fix this, I'm going to do that, I'm going to do that. Sulaiman alayhi salatu wasalam already had everything done and it was sitting there waiting. She had left and as she comes in, the question is asked to her. But before I make mention of how she walked in and how she came in, Sulaiman alayhi salam instructed the building of another palace within moments. What was that palace? His own throne where he was going to receive her. And he says, build it for me on the water, on the water, in such a way that its floor, when I receive her, will be made of strong glass, but very, very thin. And she will be able to see the fish. And she will be able to see the various sea life underneath her feet. And it was made for him blink of an eye. Everything was made, put there. Remember, he had the armies to do this for him. And as it was put there, now she comes. As she walked in, she was asked a question. She walked in now, she's looking at something looking very much like her own throne. Is this what your throne looks like? Now she's looking. Now listen to what went through her mind. She says, my throne is there. We took so long to get here. It can't be mine. If it is mine, how did it get here? And if it is not mine, how is it copied so exactly? So she's confused. One of two things. It's either mine or not mine. If it is mine, how did it get here? And if it's not mine, how is it copied exactly? Qalat. Now already she is being tackled. Her brain. Remember, she used to worship the sun. The sun. And she knows Sulaiman. He is a Muslim. He worships Allah. From the moment he wrote Bismillah in the name of Allah, the maker, the creator. She knew exactly this one is in, on a different religion. Now, her belief is being questioned because there's someone much more powerful than her. Her men already told her and now she's shocked again. And the greatness of her kingdom is being questioned because she sees someone with greater kingdom. So she says, It seems like this is mine. It seems like it. So she noticed that there are certain differences. But then again, she was uncertain how to respond. And Sulaiman alayhi salatu wasalam says, وَأُوتِينَ الْعِلْمَ مِن قَبْلِهَا وَكُنَّا مُسْلِمِينَ We were granted the knowledge of Islam before her and we surrendered to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he is now expressing that all this is because we have surrendered to the creator of the universe. Whoever created it, we have surrendered to him. He's granted us some power. Subhanallah. قِيلَ لَهَا دُخُلِ الصَّرْحِ it was told to her to enter the other palace, the place where Sulaiman alayhi salatu was. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَلَمَّا رَأَتْهُ حَسِبَتْهُ لُجَّهُ وَكَشَفَ تَنْسَاقَيْهَا When she saw it with that glass and with the water underneath it, she thought it to be water. So she lifted slightly her garment until her part of her leg showed. Sulaiman alayhi salatu was salam says, Innahu sarhun mumarradun min qawareed. No need to do that. It is just a floor that is made of very fine, thick, strong glass. Subhanallah. Look at this. No need. Now she's again baffled, completely baffled. And she's thinking to herself, How big my kingdom is. And how huge this kingdom of Sulaiman alayhi salatu was salam is. Subhanallah. All her kingdom and all her knowledge, everything that she had in comparison to what Sulaiman alayhi salatu was salam had was totally eclipsed. It was nothing. Not even a fragment. So now she starts pondering. My people are there. I have Sulaiman. I've been worshipping the sun. It hasn't helped me a lot. And it is now time to see what this man does. Humble, down to earth, Sulaiman, praying, thanking Allah. His character is exemplary. He's not haughty. He is very just amongst all his army. He is such a powerful person, such a good man. And this is when she's seen everything. And she decided this is the moment I need to surrender. How did she surrender? She says, amazingly, as her heart, Remember, she was worshipping the sun. The light of that sun was being eclipsed. 
in her heart. Slowly, she'd seen this sign, that sign, the other sign. Yet he is such a pious man. He's a worshiper of Allah. He engages in prayer so much, so many actions from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, showing his gratitude to Allah. And a new light began to beam from her heart. That light which nothing can eclipse. Rabbi inni zalamtu nafsi wa aslamtu ma'a Sulaiman lillahi rabbil alameen. O oh my maker, O oh my creator, I have oppressed myself, I have done wrong all along. I surrendered to you together with this Sulaiman for the one who has created the entire creation, Rabbul Alameen. She surrendered. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Just by looking, she surrendered. When she surrendered, her entire army surrendered. Everybody, all her people surrendered. They were all Muslimin under Sulaiman alayhi salatu wasalam. And this is the gift of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon those who believe. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us a turning point. I still have much more to say. Inshallah, tomorrow we will continue with the story of Sulaiman alayhi salam. But before we depart, a very, very important point. Here you have a woman who has seen the Qudra of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the power of Allah. She has seen the signs of Allah and that moved her to turn to surrender to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wallahi, we see the miracles of Allah every day and every night. We see the grandeur, the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala around us. But still we find ourselves dilly dallying on the wrong path. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us a lesson from this woman. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us surrender to him. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the ability to be thankful to him at all times and to obey all his commands and abstain from his prohibitions until we meet tomorrow insha'Allah. Sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad. Subhanallah bihamdihi, subhanakallahumma bihamdik. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka wa natubu.